But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man face stink bug has a face on its back, with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback Caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the inferno. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Weedas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snake heads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Long-horned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. 
Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian tree hopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the tree hoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bugs' favorite food is fish and amphibians. Ghouls, zombies, things that continue to be even after their demise. Isn't this stuff supposed to be reserved for scary books and movies? Well, if you're not on board with what I'm talking about, then I've got one word for you. Cockroaches. Have you ever tried ridding your house of these pesky little creepers? If so, then you'll understand when I say that it's nearly impossible to eradicate all of them. And that's because they're unbelievably tough. I mean, it's enough to remind you that these critters have been around for 300 million years. Yep, they crawled the earth when dinosaurs still ruled it. And I bet they terrorized their households too. And when a terrible cataclysm wiped out the great reptiles and, well, most life on this planet, roaches somehow managed to survive. These pests can develop protection against almost anything we humans throw at them. Since they're omnivorous, that means they can eat anything at all, be it stale and moldy bread, rotten cheese, or even glue. They adapt very well, and wiping out an infestation of these insects can be a real battle. However, one thing that's probably the most unsettling about cockroaches is that they can easily do without their head. That's right, if a roach loses its head, it'll not only survive something that most creatures definitely cannot, but even thrive. For some time at least. So how's that even possible? The answer lies in the cockroach's body structure. You see, a roach's brain doesn't control the insect's bodily functions as much as it does in humans or other animals. For example, it doesn't send so many nerve impulses, which allows both the head and the body to exist separately for some time. Roaches breathe through tiny holes, or spiracles, in each of their body parts. And that's not controlled by the brain either. So when a cockroach is beheaded, its body can still react to simple things, breathe, and even run on its own. It gains much less information than it would with the brain present, but it can still survive for about two weeks until it succumbs to dehydration. Roaches need their head to feed and drink, so when they lose this ability, they'll only live for as long as they have enough food in their belly to last. The ability to live after you shouldn't have survived is amazing, albeit a little creepy. But can you believe there's a creature that can live for as long as it wants? Meet the immortal jellyfish. Generally, jellies start their lives as tiny larvae, which then produce a colony of polyps attached to the ocean floor. When this colony grows, it gradually becomes a fully developed jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is the same in this regard with one very important difference. If it's stressed out, it can revert itself to the polyp stage. After some time, it goes back to its adult form, and theoretically, this process can go on indefinitely. I can only envy this jelly. You turn on the faucet in the kitchen sink, when suddenly, you hear a loud creak from below. Alarmed, you quickly turn off the water, but the creak repeats, this time from somewhere to your left. You tiptoe to the door, careful not to make a sound, when the entire house starts shaking and groaning. Terrified, you run outside, and just as you turn around in your front yard, you see your lovely home fall apart. You walk to the pile of debris that used to be your house and inspect it to find out what could have happened. And then you see it, a giant swarm of insects flying over the crumbling remains. 
And you remember, you've seen them in and out of your home for years, but didn't pay attention. If you had, you would have known that they were flying carpenter ants, and your house had been in danger for a long time. Carpenter ants only fly for a short period of time, in late spring or early summer. When the weather conditions are good enough, it's their mating season. At this time, they fly in swarms around the house and are most visible. During the rest of the year, they behave almost like normal ants, hiding inside the holes and nooks of the house. And I say almost because they do one thing that's harmful to you. They basically eat your home from the inside. Carpenter ants, as the name implies, like wood a lot. Moist or rotting wood is their first choice. It's easier to chew through to make their tunnels. But if they encounter a good and sturdy piece of wood, they won't stop either. It'll just hold them for a bit longer. As the tunnel system grows, more ants appear from the eggs their queen lays her entire life. And after a few years, the colony consists of thousands, if not millions, of ants, while your house looks like a piece of cheese, with you none the wiser. When the flying ants appear, it's a sign that the colony has already grown to an enormous size, and your home is in grave danger. Most likely, there's a whole ant palace underneath your house, and within all its wooden parts, from walls to the roof. Just a few years more, and the structural damage will become too much, leading to disaster. So if you see swarms of flying insects inside your home, call pest control immediately. The bullet ant is the largest of all the ant species. Still, despite being the biggest, they grow to no larger than the size of a penny. The bullet ant is most likely to be found in countries such as Nicaragua and Paraguay, deep within the rainforests. It might be small, but it has a big bite. The bite of a bullet ant is up to 30 times more painful than the sting of a wasp or a bee. Locals sometimes refer to the small insect as the 24-hour ant, because you'll experience an entire day of discomfort after their bite. Despite the unpleasant feeling, the bite of a bullet ant isn't too dangerous and should heal within a week. These ants have a peculiar habit that might make it easy to avoid their powerful bite. Bullet ants release a strong and disgusting stench to drive away predators. So, if you ever find yourself trekking through the rainforest and smell an intensely unpleasant odor, run. There are just shy of 300 different species of fire ants all across the world. All the species have the same powerful bite. They're tiny insects who travel in large colonies and have a distinct light brown color, almost red. Fire ants are most commonly found in the United States and are attracted to food. They tend to crash a lot of picnics that they're not invited to. Fire ant bites are incredibly itchy, but not very dangerous. Running the bites under some cold water should help to soothe the itchiness, and the bite should go away in a week or so. If you have a more severe reaction than itchiness, make sure to seek urgent advice from your doctor. Now, velvet ants aren't ants at all. They're a kind of wingless wasp that just looks a lot like ants. These bugs don't form large colonies and usually live alone, hiding in tall grass. This behavior has given them another nickname, cow ants because when a cow is grazing nearby, it might step on a velvet ant and get a painful bite in return. Humans also get bitten sometimes, especially if they walk barefoot. Velvet ants are venomous, but their venom is less potent than that of bees, so it's not really dangerous. Still, the pain from such a bite is serious, and if you want to squash this bug, good luck. They have an unusually tough carapace that protects them from other stinging insects and even birds. Termites are the scare of all things wooden and of ants too. When ants encroach on their territory, termites go out of their notorious mounds and give back more than they receive. The insects are basically blind, but their heads are equipped with natural spitfire. They spit acid at their foes, driving them away quicker than they got there. Don't even think of getting your fingers in the way of that acidic stream. It's a really unpleasant feeling. Speaking of spitting, bombardier beetles are the best at that. The look of this bug is menacing enough itself, but when it feels threatened, it will give out a loud pop and spray the enemy with boiling hot liquid. There's a chamber inside the bug's belly that keeps two substances for that. 
When they mix before spraying, they react with each other and quickly get really hot. Even birds are in big trouble if they get into the beetle's way, and other insects simply have no chance against it. You see their little cone-shaped dirt houses on the ground, like many volcanoes scattered around your yard. Ants are usually harmless little bugs, paying you no attention, just going about their day working hard. But if you've just stepped near a group of Australian bulldog ants, I have one word for you. Run! These terrifying insects get the name from those, yep, yeah, hard to miss, those huge spiky jaws protruding from their mouth. That's what they use to latch onto whatever critter happens to be their unlucky lunch today. That meal can include beetles, caterpillars, flies, or even wasps, spiders, and frogs. These ants will go after anything that gets too close. They're ferocious and smart. They'll drive out their competitor, the flat huntsman spider, by filling its nest with twigs, leaves, and anything on hand. This drives the arachnid out, leaving more lunch for the ants. But back to those malicious mandibles. That's not the only thing you gotta look out for. They use those jaws to hold on to something, a meal, an enemy, your skin, while they inject a highly venomous stinger. This is no bee sting either. They can do it multiple times, and it's harmless to them. It's the sting you have to look out for, not the bite. Though the bite's not a pleasant feeling either. And if one senses danger, it'll release a chemical in the air to alert the others. If you accidentally get too close to their colony, the whole dang brigade will come out and chase you away. And to top it all off, they have excellent vision, they're fast, and they can jump. They're also pretty big for ants, about as long as a matchstick. Stay far away from this one. Now, don't just watch your feet for dangers crawling below. Look out! There's an Africanized bee coming right at you. This thing is a lab experiment gone terribly wrong. It all started in the 1950s. The goal? Make a bee that produces more honey. The method? Cross an African species of honeybee with a bunch of European ones. The result? A ferocious Franken bee, more aggressive and defensive than most types. Actually, at first, everything was fine. But one day, because of a laboratory mishap, more than 20 colonies of these monsters broke free. They spread throughout South America and up into the northern continent. They say these bees don't like it if someone gets closer than 15 feet, just half the length of a bus, to their home, and they all come out together to defend it. That's around 10,000 angry bees headed your way. They'll chase down an intruder over the length of four football fields. Hope you've had enough stamina to escape this bug. And then there are these nightmarish large bees. The Asian green hornet is the biggest, coming in at about the size of your thumb and 20 times more massive than your standard honeybee. These guys feed on honeybees, wasps, mantises, and even other hornets. They can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour in the pursuit of food or to drive an intrusive human away. Their stinger is long enough to puncture a beekeeping suit. And apparently, there are cases of these hornets spraying their venom into an intruder's eyes. Well, we'll take a break from flying frights and head to the beach. But a peaceful shell-collecting trip can end in a nightmare if you accidentally pick up a cone snail. When hunting or defending themselves, these snails shoot a needle-like harpoon through the pointy end of the shell. Just a tiny drop of its venom is enough for 10 adults. Oh, and there's currently no anti-venom for this one. Now, the sea dweller with the strongest venom in the world is the box jellyfish. The creature is pretty large, about the length of your forearm, not including those long, long tentacles. Yet, people may not notice it because it's see-through. The jellyfish grabs onto its prey with all those toxic tentacles. They have enough venom for 60 grown people. Not many can brag of surviving a rendezvous with this jelly. Oh, the sea is no safer than your backyard. And while you're cleaning out the shed, watch out for the brown recluse spider. They're not nightmarishly big, not often growing larger than the size of a quarter. But that's the problem. You'll easily see a tarantula coming at you, which are harmless, by the way. With a brown recluse, you won't see it till it's too late. The initial bite isn't very painful. Some people don't even know they've been bitten. 
But as soon as it sank its fangs in you, its venom starts to do its dirty but silent work. Within 3-8 to eight hours, you get redness and swelling at the site. Then comes the burning. And it intensifies from there. The effects are usually done after 5 days. But they can continue for up to 3 months. Even familiar insects can be dangerous, too. Like that fly buzzing around your kitchen? You know what journey he's probably had? Well, before flying to your place, it probably sat on the dumpster. Then it flew over to the public restroom, walked all over the floor, walls, and toilet seats. Maybe it stopped in a cow pasture, the zoo. It's been to all kinds of filthy places, and now it's walking all over that beautiful fruit bowl you have on display. And whatever microbes were in the stuff it was stomping around and putting its mouth parts on, they're now all over your food. The thing about bacteria, it makes people sick. So clean up and keep flies out. Covered in brown spiky hair with nine pairs of curly arms, the hag moth caterpillar isn't like any other caterpillar. Its hairy appearance has given it the nickname monkey slug. This strange insect can be found in North America, where it lurks through shady trees and ornamental shrubbery. This hairy little creature isn't as innocent as it may appear. The hairs on its back connect to toxic glands within the caterpillar's skin. If you're curious enough to reach out and touch these hairs, your hand will instantly turn bright red and you'll feel a burning, itching sensation, kind of similar to a bee sting. So don't do that! But if you have been stung by the hag moth caterpillar, you should instantly run the sting underwater to remove any insect hairs that may remain. The sting marks should start to heal and be gone in a week. The bullet ant is the largest of all the ant species. Still, despite being the biggest, they grow no larger than the size of a penny. The bullet ant is most likely to be found in countries such as Nicaragua and Paraguay, deep within the rainforests. It might be small, but it has a big bite. The bite of a bullet ant is up to 30 times more painful than the sting of a wasp or a bee. Locals sometimes refer to the small insect as the 24-hour ant, because you'll experience an entire day of discomfort after their bite. Despite the unpleasant feeling, the bite of a bullet ant isn't too dangerous and it should heal within a week. These ants have a particular habit that might make it easy to avoid their powerful bite. Bullet ants release a strong and disgusting stench to drive away predators. So if you ever find yourself trekking through the rainforest and smell an intensely unpleasant odor, hey, I'm sorry. Kissing bugs look similar to your typical cockroach, except slimmer, wingless, and with an interesting line pattern on their back. Even though the name might sound cute, these insects are anything but. The kissing bug can typically be found in the warmer southern states of the US, and these pesky little things will hide anywhere, in cracks, under beds, and in furniture. These insects are nicknamed vampire bugs, as they only come out at night. While their bite doesn't feel too painful, it can be incredibly dangerous. It's common for humans to be allergic to the kissing bug's saliva, and if that's the case, their bite will cause the skin to be incredibly itchy. These bugs also carry a dangerous parasite that badly affects most humans. If you ever get bitten by a kissing bug, make sure to visit your doctor as soon as possible. The Japanese hornet is the largest species of hornet in the world. The Japanese hornets have a yellow and black striped pattern. Their size and shape make them distinguishable from bees and wasps. The Japanese hornet is much larger and thinner than a bumblebee and much longer than a wasp. These hornets, of course, live in Japan. No, not Toledo, where they travel in colonies of up to 700 members. People who have previously been stung by the Japanese hornet liken it to being struck by a red-hot poker. If you are ever unlucky enough to be stung by one of these insects, immediately call an ambulance, and while you wait for its arrival, wash the sting with cold water. The black widow spider is one of the most notoriously dangerous insects in the animal kingdom. Roughly the size of a paperclip, the hourglass-shaped red markings on the spider's belly make it easy to distinguish. These bugs often travel alone and can be found in warmer regions in dark, dry shelters such as basements or garages. Black widows are considered the most venomous spiders in North America. Their venom is 15 times stronger than a rattlesnake's. Strangely enough, the bite of a black widow doesn't feel particularly painful. It feels more like a pinprick, but it can make you incredibly sick. 
If you come across a black widow in your basement, don't irritate it, as they only bite when annoyed. If you get bitten, immediately seek emergency care. Healthcare professionals can offer you a black widow anti-venom that reduces the bite symptoms. The yellow jacket is a dangerous species of wasp that can be found all over the world. They're named for their distinctive yellow and black patterns. The yellow is a striking neon color much brighter than a normal wasp. Yellow jackets live in large colonies and build their nests in trees, bushes, and even underground. If you come across a yellow jacket nest, move away slowly and be careful not to threaten or irritate the wasps. The sting of a yellow jacket definitely isn't a pleasant feeling. While most people think that scorpions are related to crabs and other crustaceans, they're actually a form of insect. Scorpions are a type of arachnid, meaning they are closely related to spiders. They tend to be found in warm, dry climates like deserts. Scorpions most often come out at night. They're predatory creatures known to sting on sight. Their sting feels similar to a wasp's, but it can be much more dangerous. Scorpion stings tend to accelerate heart rates and cause difficulty breathing. If a scorpion stings you, immediately wash out the wound. Contact a healthcare professional who can give you a scorpion sting anti-venom treatment. There are just shy of 300 different species of fire ants all across the world. All of the species have the same powerful bite. They're tiny insects who travel in large colonies and have a distinct light brown color, almost red. Fire ants are most commonly found in the United States and are attracted to food. They tend to crash a lot of picnics they're not invited to. Kinda like my nephews. Fire ant bites are incredibly itchy, but not very dangerous. Running the bites under some cold water should help soothe the itchiness, and the bite should go away in a week or so. If you have a more severe reaction than itchiness, make sure to seek urgent care from your doctor. So, you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself, you get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man face stink bug has a face on its back with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. 
Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret, thankfully this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I'd love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the inferno. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Wheatas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snakeheads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you.